Hello and welcome to Dema Tutorials. Dema Tutorials is an educational channel on YouTube. What we'll do here is to help students prepare for the exams on the use of English and in literature. So if today is your first time on this channel, please click the subscribe button and help us promote this video on YouTube. And clicking the subscribe button will also help to get you notified whenever we upload a new video on this channel. Alright, today's video is on the 2019 past questions on the use of English. This video is not just answering the questions, it's an extensive tutorial on the 2019 past questions. So please, I urge you to sit down and watch this video to the end. It will really help you to get well prepared for the exam. Now, let's get started. In each of the questions, 11 to 13, choose the option that best complete the gap or gaps. My neighbor breathes his thigh while playing football. Question 11. My neighbor breathes his thigh while playing football. We have option A. Did your neighbor break his leg while playing tennis? Did your neighbor fracture his thigh while playing football? Was your neighbor involved in an accident? Did your neighbor play football yesterday? This question is actually on emphatic stress. Emphatic stress is the placement of emphasis on a word in a sentence. If you have a sentence and a particular word is being capitalized, that means that word in that sentence is emphasized. In answering questions on emphatic stress in an exam situation, the options you are going to have are going to be in question form. What I'm saying is that it's going to end with a question mark. And how do you now know amongst the options which one is the correct answer? What you just do is to check out amongst the options which of them contradicts the capitalized word, that is the emphasized word. And the correct answer must not contain the capitalized word, the emphasized word must not be in the correct answer. And the correct answer must still have the same idea with the statement. Among the options, the correct answer must still have the same idea with the sentence. Now, let's look for the option that does not contain the word bruised and still maintains the same idea. Alright, let's look at option A. Did your neighbor break his leg while playing tennis? This option does not contain the word bruised, but it doesn't maintain the same idea. Because the idea in the sentence is talking about playing football and not playing tennis. So that's why we're going to strike that one off. Option B. Did your neighbor fracture his thigh while playing football? This option does not contain the word bruised. But it's still talking about the same thing. That is playing football. It still has the same idea of playing football. So that's the correct answer to this question. Then option C. Was the neighbor involved in an accident? And again, this option does not contain the word bruised in it. But it's a different idea that it's talking about. It's talking about accidents generally. It's not talking about playing football. Option D. Did your neighbor play football yesterday? This option is still not correct even though it does not contain the word bruised in it. This option is talking about or is asking about what your neighbor did yesterday and not what happened while your neighbor was playing football. Question 12. My mother served rice and fresh fish too. My mother served rice and fresh fish too. Alright, option A. We have, did your mother serve rice and fresh fish too? B. Who served rice and fresh fish too for dinner? C. What kind of meal did your mother serve for dinner? And D. What kind of stew did your mother serve for dinner? Alright, as you already know, we are going to choose the option that does not contain the emphasized word. And you already know the emphasized word is mother. So amongst the options, we are going to choose the one that does not have mother in it. Alright, option A. Did your mother serve rice and fresh fish? This option has mother in it, so we are going to strike it out. Option B. Who served rice and fresh fish too for dinner? This option does not have the word mother in it, and it still maintains the same idea 
or serving rice and fresh fish too. So option B is the correct answer. Option C, what kind of meal did your mother serve for dinner? It contains the word mother in it. So we are going to strike it out. D. What kind of stew did the mother serve for dinner? It still contains the word mother in it. So that makes it wrong. Correct answer is option B. Question 13. The president spoke to the press. The president spoke to the press. And the emphasized word is spoke. Alright, so we're going to look for the option that does not contain the word spoke in it. Option A. Did the president write to the press? Did the president speak to the press? Option B. Option C. Who spoke to the press? Option D. Are these the press men the president spoke to? Alright, the only option that does not contain the word spoke is option A. Did the president write to the press? So option A is the correct answer. Now let's move on to the next section. In each of the questions 14 to 15, choose the appropriate stress pattern from the options. The syllables are written in capital letters. So we are going to choose among the options which syllable is appropriately stressed. Alright, before we go into answering this question, I would like to let you know that there is a video on this channel that talks about the rules of syllable stress. So if you have confusions about how to stress a word, where to place a stress on a word, please watch that video. I will leave the link at the description box. Endeavor to watch the video, it will really help you. Question 14. So Barbonite. So Barbonite. Listen to the pronunciation very well. So Barbonite. Alright, the stress is on the second syllable. On the ba. Ba. So Barbonite. So we're going to choose the option that has its stress on the second syllable. And the option that has the stress on the second syllable is option B. So option B is the correct answer. Please, please endeavor to watch the video on the rules of syllable stress. So you can know the rules that govern stressing a syllable in a word. Question 15. Departmentalize. Departmentalize. The stress is on the second syllable from the end of the word, which is on the TA. Departmentalize. Alright, the option that has the stress on the second syllable from the end of the word is option D. Departmentalize. Moving over to the next section. In each of the questions, 16 to 25, choose the option nearest the meaning to the words or word, phrase or phrases in italics. In this case, I'm not italicizing, rather I will use capital letters to write the words that should have been in italics. Alright, question 16. Adenigi is suffering from the consequence of alienation. Adenigi is suffering from the consequence of alienation. I right, so have option A, confirmation, B, isolation, C, enclosure, and D, imprisonment. So we are to choose among the options which word is the nearest in meaning to the word alienation. Alienation simply means to feel you don't belong to a particular group. That is to feel separated from a particular group. Like having a feeling that you don't have the right to associate with a group of people or a group of persons. If a family member is alienated, that means the other family members no longer associate with that particular family member. Now let's look at the options. Option A. Confirmation. Confirmation means to say that something is true. To give an assurance that something is correct or true. Alright, option B. Isolation. Isolation means the act of separating somebody or something. That is the state of being alone or lonely. Alright, option B is the correct answer. Because it means the same thing with the word alienation. Two of them talk about being alone or not belonging to a particular group, being separated from a particular group. 
All right, let's look at option C. Option C, enclosure. Enclosure means a land that is surrounded by a wall or a fence. A land, a piece of land that is surrounded by a wall or a fence, and that land is used for something. For example, if you have a land that is used for farming, and that land is surrounded by a wall or a fence, that place is an enclosure for farm. All right, it can also mean um, something that is added with a letter in an envelope. Something that is added with a letter in an envelope. Then option D, imprisonment. Imprisonment means to be in a prison or to be in a place where you don't have the right to live. As I already said, the correct answer to this question is option B, isolation. The reason why I'm taking my time to explain all the options is for you to know them. Because John might not tell you to find the nearest meaning to the word alienation DC. It might tell you to find the nearest meaning to the word confirmation or enclosure or imprisonment DC. So that's why it's important for you to learn them. This video is not just to tell you the um, correct answer to the questions. No, I'm trying to teach you. It's, it's a tutorial. Alright, let's move on to the next question. Question 17. Some children mimic their teachers. Some children mimic their teachers. We have option A, imitate. B, mime. C, ridicule. And D, lease. To mimic means... To behave like something or someone, or to make yourself look like something or someone, to just copy the way something looks and behaves. That is what it means to mimic. Then let's look at the options now. Option A imitate. Imitate means the same thing with the word mimic. That is to copy someone's actions, someone's behavior, or to act like someone. Or to look like someone. Option B, mime. Mime means to tell a story with your hands and your facial expressions. Mime is a kind of drama where you tell a story without words. Your story is being told solely on facial expressions and gesticulations. Option C, ridicule. Ridicule means to mock. To say unkind things to someone. Alright, lease. Lease means a legal agreement. That's option D. A legal agreement to use a particular building or a particular land or a particular place for a period of time. So, as you already know, the correct answer to this question is option A. Imitate, which is the same thing with the word mimic. Question 18. The police ran the criminal to earth. The police ran the criminal to earth. Option A, we have jailed him. B, knocked him down. C, discovered. And D, buried. Alright, to run something to earth or to run someone to earth means to succeed in tracking down the location of someone or something after a long and difficult search. To succeed in tracking down the location of someone or something after a long and difficult search that is what it means to run something to it so the correct answer is not jailed him which means to put him in prison and it's not also option b knock him down which means to catch him so the correct answer is discovered discovered which is something as warning him to earth remember Running something to earth means to succeed in tracking down the location of something or someone after a very long difficult search. And option D, buried. I believe you all know what it means to bury someone or something. Alright, the correct answer to this question is option C, discovered. Question 19, he is credulous. He is credulous. We have option A, credible. B, creditable. C, gullible. And D, fallible. A careless person is a person who can be tricked because he easily believes people. He takes every information who can and think without considering it. Such person is a credulous person. Alright, let's look at the options now. Option A, credible. 
A credible person is a person that is trustworthy. Someone you can put your trust on without having issues. Someone that you can take his yes to be yes and his no to be no. Such person is a credible person. Then the second option, creditable. If you say something is creditable, that means that thing is of good standard. Something that is praiseworthy. Option C, gullible. A gullible person is someone who is ready to believe people, who takes every information, who clean and sink without thinking about it, and such person can easily be tricked. So the correct answer to this question is this option, option C, gullible. Credulous and gullible mean the same thing. Option D, fallible. A fallible person is a person that can make mistakes or can be wrong. That's why they say that every human being is fallible because at one point or the other, every human being makes mistakes. Or you can actually say that something is fallible when you know that that thing can easily fail at any time. That means a fallible thing is something that you cannot put your whole trust on. Question 20. Her problem was exacerbated by the loss of her father. Her problem was exacerbated by the loss of her father. Rev option A. Exaggerated. B. Sold. C. Aggravated. And D. Infuriated. To exacerbate something means to make something that is bad or a disease to become worse. To make something bad to become worse or to make a disease to become worse. That's what it means to exacerbate. Now let's look at the meaning of the options. Option A. Exaggerated. To exaggerate something means to make something small to appear to be big. When something is small, you make it to appear to be big or something that is not that serious. But when you talk about it, you make it to look as if it's so serious. In doing that, you are exaggerating. Option B. Salt. To solve something means to bring a solution to a problem. Option C. Aggravated. Aggravated. Aggravated means to make a bad condition to become worse. To make a sickness or an illness to become worse than it is. So that's the correct answer to this question. Exacerbated and aggravated mean the same thing. To make something bad to become worse. Alright, let's look at option D. Option D, infuriated. To infuriate means to make someone angry. Question 22. Laraba saw a fallen little figure sitting outside the class. Laraba saw a fallen little figure sitting outside the class. Alright, let's look at the options. Option A, we have wise and intelligent. B, lovely and happy. C, smart and healthy. And D, short and ugly. Something is fallen when that thing is ugly. That thing is uncared for. That thing lacks luster. That thing is unhappy. That is when something is fallen. So the correct answer to this question is option D. Short and ugly. Question 23. The accident victim received a superficial wound from the crash. The accident victim received a superficial wound from the crash. We have option A, a serious, B, a painless, C, an internal, and D, an external. When something is superficial, that means that thing is on the surface. It doesn't go inside. That's when you say that something is superficial. Alright, the correct answer to this question is option D, external. When something is external, that means it's on the outside. Question 25. Accountability is a desirable quality in a politician. Accountability is a desirable quality in a politician. We have option A, responsibility. Option B, respectability. C, courage. And D, diligence. Question 25. Accountability is a desirable quality in a politician. Accountability is a desirable quality in a politician. I we have option A, responsibility, B, respectability, C, courage, and D, diligence. To be accountable means to take responsibility for your actions and decisions. 
someone who is accountable is someone who is responsible someone that can be held responsible for his actions and his decisions all right let's look at option a responsibility a responsible person is a person who is trusted to make decisions and take some actions and option b respectability a respectable person is someone who is expected to have some respect someone who is expected to command some respect all right option c courage a courageous person is a brave person and option d diligence a diligent person is someone who is hard working the correct answer to this question is option a responsibility now let's move on to the next section in each of the questions 26 to 30, select the option that best explains the information conveyed in the sentence. Alright, we have question 26. The men were not pawns in someone else's political game. The men were not pawns in someone else's political game. We have option A. The action they executed was their idea. Option B. They used someone else's plan. C. They were used by someone's political game. And option D. They loved playing political game. When you are a pawn in someone's hands, that means the action you are taking is not your own idea. You are not doing it out of your own will, but you are doing it out of the will of the person that sent you. When you're a pawn in someone's hand, that means the person is using you to achieve his or her goal. So the sentence is saying that the men were not pawns in someone else's political game. So that means what the men were doing was their own decision, it was their own idea. They were not sent. So let's look for the option that explains the statement. Option A is the correct answer. The actions they executed was their idea. A sentence and saying that they were not pawns in someone else's political game. Question 27. The class was tired of the new boy, joining away all the time. The class was tired of the new boy, joining away all the time. We have option A. He beat off people's jaws. B. He was always trained in class. C. He taught continuously. And D. He was always making trouble for the class. To draw away all the time means to talk a lot. To talk even when you're not supposed to talk. So when you say someone draws away, that means the person talks continuously. So the correct answer is option C. Question 28. The governor parried all the questions put to him by the journalist. The governor parried all the questions put to him by the journalist. Option A, we have the governor answered all the questions brilliantly. B, the governor failed all the questions. D, the governor avoided all the questions. Alright, the correct answer to this question is option D. The governor avoided all the questions. To parry means to avoid answering difficult questions. So when you say that somebody parried all the questions, that means the person avoided answering all the questions question 29 basi is as hard as nail basi is as hard as nail we have option a basi is very strong b basi is very brave c basi is determined d basi is unsympathetic all right the correct answer to this question is option a basi is very strong nail is known for being strong so when you say Basi is as hard as nail, what you are simply saying is that Basi is very strong. Question 30. The conference is biennial. The conference is biennial. We have option A. The conference is held twice every year. B. The conference is held every two years. C. The conference is held every other year. And D. The conference lasts for two years. Alright, the correct answer to this question is option B. The conference is held every two years. For something to be biennial, that means that thing happens every two years. Please let me mention that I sent one of the compiled past questions and answers booklets 
that option C is the correct answer. Option C which says the conference is held every other year. For something to be held every other year, that means that that thing holds every year. And what holds every year is an annual event and not a biennial event. Now, let's move to the next section. In each of the questions, 31 to 40, choose the most appropriate option opposite in meaning to the word or words, phrase or phrases. Here, we have to choose the option that is opposite in meaning to the capitalized words. Alright, I have question 31. He gave a painstaking account of his encounter with the ghost. He gave a painstaking account of his encounter with the ghost. Here, we have to look for the option that is opposite in meaning to the word painstaking. Alright, painstaking simply means to be detailed and careful. When you give a painstaking account, that means you are giving a detailed account, not missing out anything. You are careful not to miss out anything in your account. Now, let's look at the options. You have option A, sordid. Sordid means to be dishonest or immoral. B, fearful. Fearful means to be scared or afraid. C, half-hearted. Half-hearted means to be careless or not to pay full attention to something. Then we have option D, tender-hearted. Tender-hearted means to be nice and to be kind. So the correct option to this question is option C, half-hearted. So painstaking means to be careful and detailed, paying full attention. Then half-hearted means to be careless and not paying full attention. Question 32. If you are really keen on immediate results, you just have to adopt this pragmatic approach. If you are really keen on the immediate results, you just have to adopt this pragmatic approach. We have option A, practical, B, unrealistic, C, opportunistic, and D, sensible. Alright, so we have to look for the opposite meaning to the word pragmatic. Pragmatic means to be practical, to be sensible and logical. When you say pragmatic approach, that means you want to adopt an approach that makes sense, that is quite understandable. Alright, um, let's look at the options now. Option A, practical. Practical means something that is not based on theories, something that is likely to work and make sense. Option B, Unrealistic. Unrealistic means something that is not true, something that is based on theories and does not make sense at all. Option C. Opportunistic. Opportunistic means to take advantage of the moment just for your own good. Option D. Sensible. Something sensible is something that makes sense, something that can be understood, something that is based on logic. Alright, we already know that the meaning of pragmatic is something that is realistic, something practical and sensible. So the word or the option that is opposite to meaning to the word pragmatic is unrealistic, which is option B. Question 33. Measures were taken to authenticate the number of booklets received. Measures were taken to authenticate the number of booklets received. We have option A, affirm, B, discredit, C, discountenance, and D, count. A, affirm, B, discredit, C, discountenance, and D, count. Alright, so looking for the word or the option that is opposite in meaning to the word authenticate. The word authenticate means to prove that something is true. And something is genuine and real. Alright, let's look at the options now. Option A, affirm. To affirm means to declare publicly that you are in support of something or to declare publicly that something is good. Option B, discredit. Discredit means to make people to stop believing that something is true. When you make people to stop believing that something is true, that means you are discrediting that thing. Option C, discountenance. There is no such word as discountenance. 
All we have it is count. But the word discountenance does not exist. All right, let's look at the next one. Count. Option D, count. I believe you should know what it means to count, so there's no need explaining that. Question 34. The girl's idiosyncrasy was a passion for bread and butter. The girl's idiosyncrasy was a passion for bread and butter. We have option A, stupid outburst. B, general tendency. C, singular characteristics. And D, occupational calling. Alright, the word idiosyncrasy means a person's particular way of behaving or thinking, especially when it is unusual. A person's particular way of behaving or thinking, especially when it's unusual. Alright, let's look at the options. Now you have option A, stupid outburst. Option A is the correct answer because when you talk about outburst, that means it's not the person's usual way of behaving. It's not a way that that person behaves often. Rather, it is just an adverb, something that happens all of a sudden. So, option A is the correct answer. Stupid outburst. B, general tendency. General tendency means something that she is likely to do. C, singular characteristics. Singular characteristics means something she is known for, which is still the same thing with idiosyncrasy. Option D, occupational calling. Occupational calling means something that she does very often. Question 36. The chairman redressed the injustice meted out by the secretary. The chairman redressed the injustice meted out by the secretary. We have option A, corrected. B, restored. C, aggravated. And D, addressed. So we're looking for the option that is opposite in meaning to the word redressed. To redress means to correct something that is wrong. To redress means to correct something that is not right. Now let's look at the options now. Option A, corrected. Corrected is something as redressed. B, restored. Restored means to bring something back to its original shape or back to its original position. That is what it means to restore something. Aggravated. To aggravate means to make something worse, something bad, to become worse than it is. And address. To address someone means to talk to someone or talk to a group of people. Alright, the correct answer to this question is option C. Aggravated. Question 37. The lines of Cameroon. Is really an indomitable thing. The lands of Cameroon is really an indomitable thing. We have option A, a powerful, B, a prominent, C, a weak, and D, a cowardly. So we are going to look for the option that is opposite in meaning to the word indomitable. The word indomitable means to be brave and determined. To be brave and determined, not willing to accept defeat easily. That is what it means to be indomitable. Alright, so we have option A, a powerful. A powerful person is a person who can control people and influence people. Someone who has a lot of energy. That's a powerful person. And that is not the correct answer because it's not opposite meaning to the word indomitable. Option B, a prominent. A prominent person is a person who is well known or an important person. An important person in the society, and like the president of your country, the governor of your state, your commissioners, your ministers, the senators, those people are prominent people because they are important people and also they are very well known. Alright, let's look at option C, a weak. A weak person is a person who doesn't have energy. Option D, a cowardly. A cowardly person is a person who is not brave. Who does not have the energy to do things that other people do, or does not have the courage to do things that other people do, especially when he considers them difficult. So that's the correct option. The opposite meaning to the word indomitable is cowardly. Question 38. The plan to merge the two local government areas has met with much apathy. 
The plan to merge the two local government areas has met with much apathy. So we are looking for the word that is opposite in meaning to the word apathy. Alright, option A, we have hospitality, B, criticism, C, consideration, and D, enthusiasm. The word apathy means not interested. It's a feeling of not being interested in a particular thing. It could be a topic or an event. So the sentence is simply saying that the people were not interested in the plan to merge the two local government areas. Alright, let's look at the options. Which one has the opposite meaning to the word apathy? Hospitality means being friendly and generous to your guests. Being friendly and generous to your guests. Criticism means expressing disapproval of someone's actions and someone's thoughts. Then when you talk about consideration, consideration option C means the action of thinking about something carefully. When you think about something carefully, you are considering that thing. Alright, option D, enthusiasm. Enthusiasm means to be really excited and interested in something. To be really excited and interested in something. So option D is the correct answer. Question 39. Mutual love is what Kabi and Musa have in common and nothing else. Mutual love is what Kabi and Musa have in common and nothing else. Option A. Insincere. B. One-sided. C. Unhappy. And D. Disrespectful. The word mutual is used in describing a feeling that two people share equally. A feeling that two people share equally. When you say mutual love, that means that Kabi and Musa love each other equally. And right, let's look at the meaning of the options now. Option A, insincere. Insincere means not true or not honest. Option B, one-sided. One-sided means is on one side. That means that the love between Kabi and Musa is on one side. Maybe it's Musa that loves Kabi more. Or Kabi loves Musa more. Alright, the word unhappy means not happy. Option C. And D. Disrespectful. The word disrespectful means not having respect or not showing regards for something or someone. Not showing regards for something or someone. So the correct answer to this question is option B. One sided. Remember I told you that mutual means something that the two parties have equally a feeling that the two parties have equally so the sentence is saying that kabi and musa have the same amount of love for each other but when you say one-sided that means that either musa loves kabi more or kabi loves musa more question 40 always strive to get what is legitimate always strive to get what is legitimate we have option a illicit Option B, Lego. C, good. And D, improve. The word legitimate means lawful. Lawful, something legitimate is something that is approved by the law. Alright, option A, illicit. Illicit means something that is unlawful or something that is not approved by the law. Something that is not approved by the law. Option B, Lego. Lego means lawful or something approved by the law. Option C, good. Good, you already know what it means to be good, so there's no need explaining that. Option D, improve. Improve means to become better than before. To become better than before. So the correct answer to this question is option A, illicit, which means not lawful. And you already know that legitimate means lawful. Alright, let's move over to the next question. In each of the questions, 41 to 50, fill the blank space. With the most appropriate options A to D, you have option A. You can go on. I dash what you are saying. You can go on. I dash what you are saying. You have option A. I'm understanding. B. Maybe understanding. C. Understand. And D. Was understanding. All right. The word understand is a static verb. A static verb is a verb that expresses state or condition. It does not express action, so you cannot use it with ing. What I'm simply saying is that you cannot use understand as a present continuous tense. 
so that's why you cannot use ing at the end other words that you cannot use ing at the end are here that's h-e-a-r you cannot say hearing i'm hearing you that's wrong grammar you cannot also say um having i'm having it that's also wrong grammar you cannot say owning that's o w n you cannot say i'm owning a pen now that you can say i own a pen so these are just few examples of words where you cannot use ing at the end or you cannot use them as a present continuous tense question 42 the angry woman shouted and cursed in language that's shocking for words the angry woman shouted and cursed in language that's shocking for words we have option a very b two c so and d far all right the correct answer to this question is option b two too shocking for words is an expression used to show that you are very surprised. Question 43. If you dash me that you had run out of petrol, I would have given you some. If you dash me that you had run out of petrol, I would have given you some. We have option A. We are to tell. B. Tell. C. Have told. And D. Had told. This sentence talks about something that happened in the past. So for that, we are going to use a verb that is in the past perfect tense. Past perfect tense. A past perfect tense indicates that an action was completed at some point in the past. And it is formed with had plus the past participle of a verb. So we are going to choose option D, had told. So the sentence is going to read, if you had told me, that we ran out of petrol, I would have given you some. Alright, let's move on to the next one. Question 44. Dash to your birthday party in September. Dash to your birthday party in September. Option A. My come. B. Will I come? C. Would I come? And D. Shall I come? Alright, the correct answer to this question is option A. My come. The speaker in this sentence is actually asking for permission to come for the person's birthday party in September. When you're asking for permission to do something, the right word to use is may. May I help you? When you hear may I help you, the speaker is actually asking for permission to allow him or her to help you. May I use your pen? The speaker is actually asking you for permission to use your pen. So the correct answer, like I said earlier, is option A. Question 45. Tosin refused to be dash, though he has written the examination three times. Tosin refused to be dash, though he has written the examination three times. We have option A, sad, B, placated, C, frustrated, and D, different. Alright, to be sad means to be unhappy, not to be happy. To be placated means to make someone who is angry, to be less angry about something. To be frustrated means to be angry or annoyed or impatient because you cannot achieve what you want. And option D, different. To be different means not to be the same with others. So the correct answer to this question is option C, frustrated. Because option C, frustrated, is the only word that has to do with achieving something. And you know when you're writing an exam, you're trying to achieve something, which is to pass the exam. So the sentence is telling us that even though Tosin has not achieved success after writing the exam three times, he or she did not get annoyed or impatient. 46. In dash, A. More departments, B. A much departments, C. Most departments, and D. Much more departments. We politicians are identified with the masses. Uh, the correct answer to this question is option B. A much deeper sense is an expression used in showing that you have to think about something more carefully. So the sentence is saying that if you think more carefully, we politicians are identified with the masses. 
So the expression is not more the persons, most the persons, or much more the persons. Rather, the expression is a much the persons. Forty-seven. People who live by dash each other know, b one another know, c oneself know, and d themselves know. What loneliness is like. The correct option to this question is option D. Themselves know. Option A, each other know. When you live with each other, that means you are not living alone. I don't know what loneliness is like. Option B, one another know. When you live with one another, that means you are not living alone. I don't know what loneliness is like. Oneself know. Option C, when you live by oneself, you're actually living alone, but this is not the correct answer because it's a singular pronoun and the subject of this sentence, people, is plural, so it doesn't agree with the subject of the sentence. Option D, themselves know. Themselves know is the correct answer to this question because it's a plural pronoun and it agrees with the subject of the sentence, people. Question 49. Ali has been cured of his amnesia. He no longer suffers from. Ali has been cured of his amnesia. He no longer suffers from. We have rants of anxiety, loss of memory, option B, C, pains in the arms, and D, bouts of malaria. Alright, the examiner is trying to find out whether you know the meaning of amnesia. Amnesia means partial or complete loss of memory. It's a mental condition where somebody loses his memory, whether partially or completely. So option B is the correct answer, loss of memory. Before we go ahead, please, I want to plead with you. If you haven't clicked the subscribe button, please click it. It doesn't cost anything. It doesn't even cost an extra data. Please help us promote this video on YouTube by clicking the subscribe button. I will appreciate that a lot. And you already know, clicking the subscribe button will also help to get notified whenever we upload a new video. And we upload good videos on this channel. Please click the subscribe button and help us promote this video on YouTube. I trust you will do that. Thank you. Question 50. The match gave the team a chance to show their We have A. Worth B. Position C. Progress and D. Mental a worth b position c progress and d metal worth means value or the usefulness of something position means the place of something or the level of something progress means great skill at doing something and metal means the ability and determination to do something successfully despite difficult condition a match is a competition between two skillful teams or two teams that are believed to be skillful. In a match, you don't come to show off your worth or your value. No. In a match, you don't come to show off your position. In a match, you don't come to show off your skill or your prowess. In a match, what you show off is your determination because that is what will make the team to be successful. So what the sentence is saying is that the match actually gave the team an opportunity to show how determined and how able they were to win the match. So the correct answer to this question is option D. Metal. The match gave the team a chance to show their metal. Now let's move to the next section. In each of the questions, 51 to 60, choose the word or words, phrase or phrases. Which best fills the gap in each sentence? We have question 51. I'm very sorry, Dash, to attend the meeting yesterday. I am very sorry, Dash, to attend the meeting yesterday. We have option A, for failure. Option B, in failing. C, for failing. And D, to having fail. When you have done something wrong, you apologize for it. So that's why we're going to choose the option that has for. And the sentence is in the present continuous tense. Because if you read the sentence carefully, you find out that the speaker is actually talking at the moment. is actually apologizing at the moment. 
That's the feeling you get. I am very sorry, dash, to attend the meeting yesterday. So the speaker is actually talking at that particular moment. So the correct answer that we are going to choose now is option C, for failing. The option that has for and the verb is in the present continuous tense. The present continuous tense always ends with ing. Question 52. The old politicians were discredited because they tried to dash on the people's ignorance. The old politicians were discredited because they tried to dash on the people's ignorance. We have option A, cash in on. B, cash in with. C, cash in with. And D, cash in by. Alright, the correct answer to this question is option A, cash in on. To cash in on means to take advantage of a situation. It is an idiom used in expressing that someone wants to make gain, especially financial gain, from a situation. The other options, option B, cash in with, cash in with, and option D, cash in by, are all incorrect. The correct expression to making gain out of a situation is cash in on. Question 53. The plane overshot the dash in a minor accident. The plane overshot the dash in a minor accident. You have option A. Railway. B. Hangar. C. Tarmac. And D. Runway. Option A. Railway. Railway has to do with train. It doesn't have anything to do with the plane or an aircraft. Option B. Hangar. Hangar is a place where aeroplanes or aircraft are being kept for maintenance. It is a large building where aeroplanes are being worked on and also the building is meant to shield it from the direct sun rays. Alright, option C, tarmac. Tarmac is a place where um, an aircraft rolls to when it lands. It is a place where it parks after it lands. Then option D, runway. Runway is a place or just a narrow road where the aircraft takes off. Before an aircraft takes off, it usually moves on the ground before it goes up. So that space where it moves is the runway. And the correct answer to this question is option D, runway. When an aircraft overshoots the runway, that means it has passed the place where it's supposed to take off. And that usually happens in the airports. When an aeroplane wants to take off, sometimes as it's driving, as it's moving on the runway, it passes the point where it's supposed to take off. So when that happens, you say that the aircraft has overshot the runway. Question 54. The journalists always collect and publish dash. The journalists always collect and publish dash. We have option A, information. B, an information. C, some information. And D, information. The word information is an uncountable noun. So you don't pluralize it. That means you don't add S or you don't add an or some. You don't make it look as if you can count it. So, the correct answer to this question is option D, information. It doesn't go with S or AN or some because you can't count it. It's an uncountable noun. Alright, let's move on to the next question, question 55. Question 55. After the team had considered two goals, their enthusiasm dash. After the team had considered two goals, their enthusiasm dash. We have option A, was beginning to win. B was winning, C begin to win, and D had been winning. Now right, this question starts with the word after. After something, another thing begins. So that's why we're going to choose the option that has begin in it. And that leads us to option A and C. Option A and C was beginning to win and begin to win. Another thing we're going to look at is the tense of the sentence. The sentence is in the past tense. So we're going to choose amongst the two options, A and C, 
which one has the tense in the past? Alright, option A was willing to win has the tense in the past because it has was in it. Was is the past tense of is. So option A is the correct answer. Option B, begin to win, isn't correct because it's in the present tense. Begin is present tense. Alright, let's move on to the next question. Question 56. Question 56. Mary goes to school, dash, boss. We have option A, in, B, by, C, with, and D, on. The correct answer to this question is option B because we are talking about the means through which Mary goes to school. We can say she traveled by air. We can say she went to the U.S. by ship. So when we talk about the means through which the person travels or goes somewhere, we use the um, preposition by. Question 57. The thief ran dash lock when the policeman running after him caught up with him and knocked him down. The thief ran dash lock when the policeman running after him caught up with him and knocked him down. We have option A, into, B, with, C, of, and D, out of. Alright, the correct expression is D, out of, to run out of lock. The thief ran out of luck when the policeman running after him caught up with him and knocked him down. To run out of luck means to become unlucky. To run out of water means not to have water. To run out of anything means to lack that thing. So the correct expression is to run out of. So option D is the correct answer. Question 59. The managing director did not pay his staff last month. The managing director did not pay his staff last month. We have option A. Didn't he? Option B. Had he not? C. Has he? And D. Did he? In this kind of question, all we do is to look at the auxiliary verb. And in this case, the auxiliary verb is did. The managing director did not pay his staff last month. The auxiliary verb in this question is did. Remember, auxiliary verb is a verb that helps the main verb. So when an auxiliary verb is being accompanied by not, that is when it's in the negative, it's being accompanied by not, then you know that the answer to the equation is going to be in the positive. What I'm saying is that it's not going to have not. So the answer we are going to choose will not have not. But it will still have the same auxiliary verb did. So the correct answer to the question is option D. Did he? Assuming I change this question to the managing director has not paid his staff this month. The managing director has not paid his staff this month. So instead of using did, I've used has. The correct answer would be has he. Because I've used has in the sentence and not did. But because the question is did not. So the correct answer to this question is option D. Did he? Now let's look at the last question. Question 16. Many lives are lost on Nigerian roads. Dash lack of consideration for other road users by crazy drivers. Many lives are lost on Nigerian roads, dash, lack of consideration for other road users by crazy drivers. We have option A, in view, B, resulting in, C, owing totally to, and D, through. Option A, in view, in view means based on considering or looking at. Option B, resulting in, resulting in means the consequences of something. Something that leads to another, that is what it means to result in. Owing to, or owing totally to, means as a result of, or because of. Then option D, through. Through is, um, is a preposition that is used in showing that something started from one end and ended in another end. Or something started from one side and ended in another side. So the correct answer to this question is option C, owing totality to. 
So the sentence will correctly read, Many lives are lost on Nigerian roads, owing totally to lack of consideration for other road users by crazy drivers. If you remove owing totally to and replace it with because of, the sentence will still make the same sense. With that, we come to the end of this video. I hope it was a good vision for you. And I hope you learnt a lot of things from this video. I took my time to prepare this video for you, hoping that anyone watching this video or anyone that will watch this video will score high on the use of English. So please guys, I need you to share this video to your friends. And if you learned something from this video, please don't forget to click the subscribe button. It helps us out. It helps to promote this video on YouTube. I believe you click that subscribe button and share this video to your friends so that all of us can actually do very well on the use of English in this coming jump exam. Thank you very much. See you in another video.